Hello everyone, Michael Shamlin here, and today we're talking about Lightroom. Over the last 16 years of using this software and seeing its progression, I found a ton of hidden features. And today I'm gonna to share my top 10 with you that I use on a regular basis to edit my own photography. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so tool number one, which is super simple and straightforward. If you wanna reset any of the sliders you've already adjusted here in Lightroom, all you have to do is double tap the name and it'll reset it. So you don't have to actually finagle with the slider to reset it. And what's really cool here is you can also do this in set. So if I wanna reset all of the tonalities, I can just click tone. And if I wanna reset all these down here, I could click on presence. Additionally to this, as a, as a quick bonus, you can also incrementally change any of these tools by clicking on the number on the right side and then use the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard to move this super subtly. And I find this to be really helpful when I'm adjusting white balance instead of having to go through the extremes of pushing the slider around. All right, so tool number two has to do with sharpening. Now, Lightroom by default auto sharpens our picture to about 40, which is usually pretty good. We can take that down or bring it up if we wanna further sharpen the image. The only problem is this doesn't account for areas that you don't want sharpened, such as the sky, because we don't really need these pixels sharpened. All that's gonna do is increase the grain and noise within our photograph. So we can use the masking tool to deal with that. We can bring this up, but if you wanna visualize the masking tool, you can click Alt on your keyboard on Mac and Option on PC, and everything in white is what's gonna be sharpened and everything in black is gonna be left alone. So now you can see we're only targeting the mountains and that's gonna be a much better way to sharpen this image and keep it a little cleaner. All right, so tool number three is a really handy one. If you go ahead and tap J on your keyboard, you're gonna engage show clipping on the highlights and the shadows. So in red, it's showing clipped detail in the highlights and in blue, you're showing clipped detail in those shadows. We could then pull the blacks up and maybe take the whites down to reduce that you can also click these on and off by tapping these buttons right here. And as an added bonus, if you wanna adjust any of these sliders, you can actually do that from the histogram as well. So you can see I'm adjusting the exposure. I can bring up the whites and the highlights up here and even bring up the blacks and move the shadows all from the top of the histogram right here. All right, tool number four, if you're finding it a bit distracting looking at your image and trying to get an idea of what it truly looks like with all of these tools and settings on the side, you can tap on the L key on your keyboard and this is going to place your image on a darker background. This makes it much easier to see what the final photograph is gonna look like. And if you tap L once more, the background goes pure black. And sometimes I find this really helpful to do every once in a while before I'm done with the photograph. As an added bonus to this tip, if you wanna change the background while you're working on the photograph, you can do that as well. You can shift this gray by right-clicking on the background and going to white if you want to display your image on a white background or you're placing this somewhere like a website that has a white background, this is a great way to edit to do that. Or you can change this to black, which is also really handy for editing. It just depends on what you plan on doing with this photograph. Are you planning on printing it? Is it going on Instagram? Is it going on your website? All of these things are gonna determine what type of background you should probably be working with. All right, so tip number five is super simple, and this is using the backslash key. So if you click on the backslash key while you're working on your image, you're gonna see a before version of your photograph. This is really, really handy. I use this all the time while I'm working to see how I've progressed the edit and to also see if I've maybe gone a little overboard with the edit. Sometimes while you're working, if the before looks a little better than the after, you could have gone in the wrong direction. So this again is a really handy tool to have. All right, so tool number six is called match total exposures, and this one is really cool. All right, so let's say you've taken a progression of images here over a period of time. For example, this series right here where I'm capturing the waves and I stick my finger in the front to kind of remove some flare and then I'm changing the settings to bracket for the light or you're just shifting the settings because you see the light changing and you feel like oh, okay I need to you know shift this a bit and and you get back to Lightroom and you have all of these inconsistent frames well you can go in and match all of these exposures with a few clicks so the first thing we're going to do here is find which image we want to match to I'm going to just do it to this first image then I'm gonna hold down shift and select all of the ones that I wanna to match to, and then go up to settings and match total exposures. And then you can go back down and look 
and every single image in this series is going to be matched by Lightroom analyzing the images and adjusting the exposure for you. This makes it really nice when you're doing any sort of exposure blending, focus stacking, or compositing. All right, so tool number seven is the auto mask feature, and this feature is pretty amazing. So if we go over to masking here and use the brush tool, let's say we just wanted to brighten a little bit of the sky right above the horizon here. I'm gonna use the brush tool to just kind of brush along here, but you can see the problem is it's brushing into the mountain because it's not a targeted selection, it's just kind of brushing wherever. Well, let me delete this and let's make that mask again. But this time I'm gonna make sure I'm selected on auto mask. Lightroom is gonna account for the colors and tones of that area. And as you can see, as I'm brushing, it's attempting to only brush into the sky. And now if I alter this, you can see it's only adjusting that area. This is a pretty powerful tool and vice versa. If I brush here, let's say I just wanted to brush on the mountains. There we go, brighten that up. Pretty amazing tool and a really quick way of masking some of your selections. As an added bonus masking tip, let me show you a really cool thing you can do here to really isolate your selections. Let's just make a mask of really anything here. I'm gonna select the mountain using a color range and maybe just brightening up the exposure. Maybe give it some warmth. Okay, and now we have this selection, but you can see we're adjusting parts of the sky as well as the mountain here. Now we can add or remove a mask from this mask that we have, or we can use what's called intersect mask with. And this is going to further target whatever we select using a new mask. And in order to do this, you're just gonna right click on the thumbnail, intersect mask with, and then we have the option of brush, linear, radial. I'm gonna use a radial gradient here and just select that area around the mountain. And now you can see our mask in red is only targeting that section. So it's kind of like doubling up the masks to really target a certain area and refine that selection. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more because I release a ton of photography and video content here. You can also check out my website for more tutorials and workshops, but either way, I really appreciate you watching. All right, tool number eight, let's say I wanna make multiple versions of an edit or with different crops for whatever reason. Maybe I wanna upload one to my website, one to Instagram. You can actually do that by right-clicking on the thumbnail of your picture and create virtual copy. Now, what's beautiful about this is it's not making a new file on your hard drive. This is only located within your Lightroom catalog. And I can make as many of these as I want. So here's three versions of this photograph. Let's say I can make one that's like a one-to-one -one crop, maybe one that is darker and more moody. And now I have all three located here in Lightroom. This is especially handy if you're working on an edit that you're uncertain about and you wanna just play around and have some different options. All right, tip number nine is the crop overlays. This one is really cool, so check this out. If I click on the crop tool, this is our standard view right here. It's got two lines that go through the rule of thirds, but if I tap the O key on the keyboard, I can actually change this and make some different crop variations here. There's even one for the, the uh, golden ratio, which is interesting. I really like this one personally. This one shows different aspect ratios because oftentimes I'm cropping my images a four by five. So it's really cool to just kind of overlay that onto the image. And then another really handy one here is this one where the grids are a lot smaller, making it easier to adjust your horizon if that is crooked. You can also adjust your horizon right here with this little angle tool just draw where the horizon is and then it will set it to that point double tap and now you have a straight horizon all right and tool number 10 might be my favorite on the list now this tool isn't exactly hidden in the sense that you've probably scrolled by it a million times but may have never used it before so i've got this image from the dolomites and i'm going to go ahead and scroll all the way down to the calibration tool now this tool was created to make micro adjustments on the pictures that your camera is taking and slightly shift each color in the image because each camera that we have, whether you're using a different brand or a different manufacturer, you're getting a slightly different color science out of your RAW files. However, there's a lot more creative and stylistic applications that you can use for this tool. I wanna to start with the power of the saturation here. So scroll back to the top and let's say we wanna add some punch to our colors. Normally we would punch up the saturation here 
maybe punch up some vibrance. Now what I've found here is if I pull these sliders all the way, let's say we pull saturation all the way, it's adjusting every single color evenly, but you can see it is really heavy handed on the yellows here. Probably one of the worst yellow colors I've ever seen. And then if we shift over to vibrance, I find that the vibrant slider is also really heavy handed with the blues specifically. Now when we adjust these saturation sliders down here, you're gonna notice it's a lot more subtle and pulling up the blue saturation not only gives the colors a slight bit of a punch, it also really helps to brighten up these warm tones and give that area a little bit more life. Now I'm gonna pull the saturation here on the greens. You can play around with a mix of all three. They're gonna do slightly different adjustments to the different color values within your photograph, and you can oftentimes get some fantastic results here. So I wanna show you something I found a bit interesting here. I pulled the saturation of all three of these sliders in the calibration, all the way to 100. And you can see it's, well, a bit oversaturated, which is to be expected with the slider that far. But here's a difference between right here, this is vibrance pulled all the way to 100. You can see just how much more saturated and intense those blues are. And then saturation pulled all the way to 100. And we're getting that insane yellow color here. I think it's really cool that you get a different result and this has quickly become one of my favorite ways to adjust the saturation levels of a photograph. Now obviously this is way too far, we can take this down, but even with these sliders pulled pretty far you can get some really nice results that aren't overdone. I'd say in most situations I find myself prioritizing the blue primary saturation and then I'll just adjust these two to kind of fine tune the look. Now you'll notice on top of the saturation sliders, there's also hue. Well, what is that gonna do to the photograph? If we pull this in this direction, you can see it's adjusting every single color in our image. It's really shifting the red, green, and blue values. Now you might be asking, how's this different from the HSL sliders? Well, the HSL sliders are adjusting each color individually. You're only adjusting that one color that you select, whereas this is shifting every single color in a slightly different direction. Now this is great, but how can we use this practically? So let's go back to our image here, and we're just gonna play around first with the blue primary. And you can see as I shift this down, our yellows are becoming a bit more orange and our blues are becoming a bit more cyan. And vice versa, we can pull it this direction and the yellows become more green, sky becomes <laughs> more magenta, which I find to be a lot less appealing than the previous. So let's pull that back. And then with green primary, as I shift that up, it's giving this nice rosy tone to the warmth here. So whether you wanna use this tool just for the saturation of your images or play around a bit with the colors, I definitely recommend trying this out for your workflow. So those are my top 10 hidden features here in Lightroom that I use all the time, and now I would love to hear from you. Do you have a specific tool that you feel is underused or undervalued within Lightroom? If so, I would love to hear your thoughts. Please let me know in the comments. And with that, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.